friends. I'm Melissa Esplin with calligraphy.org, and I'm showing you a sneak peek of the brush lettering book that I've created with Close to My Heart. Before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on a Close to My Heart video. In this video, we'll be using the brush lettering with Melissa Esplin book that's inside an everyday life album. This is the eight and a half by 11 album in ballerina. It also comes in gray. We'll also be using the Close to My Heart Melissa Esplin multicolor small brush pen set and tracing paper. You'll also need paper clips and some paper that you have on hand to be, so we can do a project together. So we're going to grab, um, well, inside your book, we have the brush lettering book. Inside the book, you can see we have Back to Basics, where we have all the basic strokes that you need in order to make successful lowercase letters. We have each letter of the alphabet broken down by basic stroke with a description on how to write it out. And of course, all lowercase, all uppercase, sentences, projects, and finally, guide sheets. You definitely want to have guide sheets in order to work your way through, build that muscle memory, and gain confidence with your work. When we get started, we have the, again, the tracing paper over top page 38 of the brush lettering book. And I have a gray and black Melissa Esplin multicolor brush pen. First and foremost, we want to hold the pen in between our index finger and our thumb, just like this. Now I'm going to get this one open so you can see both left and right. That index finger and thumb are just opposite of each other and it looks like I'm creating a little eye shape with my index finger and my thumb. My middle finger wraps around and the, the inside of my middle finger just right here touches the bottom of my marker. My ring finger and my pinky fingers just tuck underneath. They don't really do much of anything. My wrist is rotated open and my writing wrist is pointing towards my non-writing shoulder. This orients my brush marker to the side. You see how it's pointing horizontal and parallel to my, my guidelines right here. This is really important. We're orienting our paper, our pen, perpendicular to our angle line. This is our angle line right here. We're making sure that you orient that properly. If you don't orient it properly, you can still make some beautiful letters, but you will have to work much harder in to make thicks and thins and those transitions clean and in the same consistent spot. It also prevents you from uh, protecting the point of the tip and you tend to have a dull tip to work with. Granted, you can still do some great work with a dull tipped brush, but we want these brushes to last as long as possible. So use the side of your brush to make a very thick stroke. The strokes that we're going to cover today are just a few of the X height strokes. So they really only fall in between these two lines here. We're going to start with an oval. This oval starts halfway in between these two markings, these top and bottom markings, basically at three o'clock works it, its way all the way up. As you work your way down, you apply pressure, release it, and then meet back up. If you don't meet back up perfectly, or if you overlap, don't worry about it, it's okay. So create an oval starting at three o'clock, working your way to 12, apply pressure at nine, release pressure at six, and make your way back up to three o'clock. Let's do that one more time. Start at three o'clock, work your way up to 12 o'clock, apply pressure at nine, release pressure at six, and meet back up at three. If you're struggling to meet back up, try to look where you want your pen to go. Don't look at your pen, but look where you want your pen to be. This is a really key tip for making great calligraphy. The next stroke that we're going to do is the underturn. This starts at the top line with a firmly planted brush. We apply pressure, 
And then just after that nine o'clock mark, we release pressure to a six o'clock mark and we're at a hairline all the way back up. So you see how we are using this oval stroke, but we're just opening it up at the top. Let's do that again. Start at the waistline, apply pressure, release at nine o'clock, have a hairline at six o'clock, and continue all the way back up to the top line. One more time for good measure. Start at the top, apply pressure, release, and come back up. Be sure to work slowly as you're learning these basic strokes. You're trying to connect your brain to your hand to develop this muscle memory. You're learning the choreography for the very first time, so give yourself some patience to learn that choreography properly. The next stroke is the over, over turn. This starts at the bottom. You work your way up with a nice gentle hairline, make a curve at the top, and slowly apply pressure. Maintain that pressure until you get to the very bottom. Plant and release back the way you came. If you release towards your body, you're going to create a little spike. We don't want that. Again, start at the bottom, work your way to the top, start to apply pressure, maintain that pressure until you get to the bottom, and lift. One more time. Hairline up, curve around, apply pressure, plant, and release. There we have three very essential basic strokes. We're gonna do one more before we work on our project. This last stroke is a combination of your overturn and underturn, and it's going to be about as wide as the over and under turns combined. So this is going to be a little bit wider than your other strokes. We start at the baseline like we're going to do an overturn. Work your way up to the top line, Apply pressure, and that at this midpoint, release pressure and curve all the way back up. Let's do that one more time. We want the bulk of our pressure to land right there in the middle of this X height. Start at the baseline, work your way up, apply pressure, release, and work your way up. You see how this looks like half of the overturn and half of the underturn are sharing a shade or a downstroke. Start at the bottom, work your way up, curve around, apply pressure, release pressure, and work your way back up. We've got these three essential strokes. What I want you to do is practice each of these essential strokes and be sure to grab yourself a copy of the brush lettering workbook. It's got all sorts of tips on how to create these strokes, how to visualize these strokes, and if you're struggling, we have some troubleshooting tips there as well. So I like to do a full line of each basic stroke. Practice each basic stroke with purpose and a slow pace. Try to maintain a consistent pace and a consistent proportion from the beginning to the end. Now I say try because it's going to be hard. Practicing ovals and shapes that are based off of the oval are very difficult at first. It's not going to come 100% naturally, and that's okay. We're just working towards developing that muscle movement, that familiarity with these strokes, understanding the choreography, and getting comfortable with the mechanics of a brush marker. Practicing these oval strokes will help you build that even though it may take a little bit longer than you'd like. If you look at these strokes right now, you'll notice they are not all the same. 
And let me tell you, that is okay. We are striving for progress, not perfection. And one of the beautiful things about brush lettering, hand lettering, point to pen calligraphy, broad edge calligraphy, anything really developed by the hand, you get this natural organic shape that occurs. You get little bits of inconsistencies here and there that really brings your own personality into the work. It's, it's not a font. And that's the whole point. You want your personality, you want your penmanship, your hand, your energy, your DNA, so to speak, on the page when you're making these memories. So don't feel like it has to look exactly like a computer font because that's not what we're after. We're after a beautiful yet organic shape. You can do a whole row of each of these shapes. I'm going to show you the underturn. The underturn is going to be a little easier than the oval because you're not worried about matching those hairlines up next to each other. And the overturn is going to be even easier because you're going from a hairline to a shade. It's just a much easier transition to go from light to dark than it is from, from dark to light. And I'd encourage you to get the tracing sheets uh, and fill up an entire packet of tracing sheets with these rows. Now you can see I did X height practice only. There's this huge gap between each of these lines. Feel free to go in and write out basic strokes in between the lines. So we'll write, we'll draw some. Between these lines. And again, I don't have the guides here telling me how, how well I'm doing, but that's okay. We're just working on the mechanics of the pen. We're getting familiar with these strokes and we're practicing that choreography. So you can work your way in between. If you really want to have guides, you can shift your paper down and make sure to fasten it with a paper clip and then continue your practice. So you're working within those guidelines. But that's a great way to fill up an entire sheet and use these sheets completely. Don't waste any spare space. I'd like to show you my practice sheets here. Just a whole row of practice, basic strokes. And what I did on the first line was each stroke individually. The second line or the minute line in between each of these individual strokes, I connected those strokes together so that I could get a feel for how those strokes get connected together. So I created a whole texture of pages. This is perfect. You can cut this out and create a little peekaboo in your work. Little, you can put this on a card or a scrapbook uh, paper and have that and fasten and have it you can open it up and see a cute little photo underneath. So there are ways to use your practice papers without feeling like they're going to waste. Or you can just toss them. This tracing paper, you can do either one. Okay, we are going to move on to a little project. Now we haven't under we haven't learned how to do the letters or numbers or how to form words that is all inside the brush lettering book you definitely want to check out that book but there are some great things that you can do that are really fun with just the basic strokes alone I have a fun project using the basic strokes as a border for this fun layout these are my three kids and they were really goofy with this little photo shoot that we did last year as a family. I want to sh showcase that playful energy. So I created a border around here and it, it just adds this little fun, playful element. And it creates kind of a, a bit of a texture going on. 
because you're seeing those downstrokes happening over and over again. So let's work on that border, show you how to create that border. I'm going to get my Close to My Heart Melissa Esplin Multicolor Brush. I like black, but I use the brown color that you have in your pack. It's really great for all sorts of fun projects that are more warm. I like black and white. So we're going to pull in. I'm not using a ruler at all. I'm just eyeballing this. You can get a ruler and draw in your lines, but this, this kind of takes away from that playfulness. You just want to have your eye on this edge of the paper and just use that to create your alignment. But I'm kind of starting about a half an inch in from the top left corner, and I'm going to create my oval. And I'm going to create my oval about three-fourths of an inch tall. And from here, I'm going to just work through the basic strokes that we worked on together and repeat them over and over again. All right, I have my oval, underturn, overturn, compound curve, these are the strokes that we covered today. So oval, underturn, overturn, compound curve. And as you're going through, check back on this initial oval and compare, okay, am I getting too small or too big? You look at that oval as a little bit smaller than this one, and that's okay. So I start to slowly work my way a little bit bigger. So you want to just keep checking your work and making sure that you're not progressively getting too big or leaning, but you check with each stroke, and if you're leaning just a little bit one, with one, you can pull it back up so you have this slight meandering line, but it's all within a basic threshold. Oval. New turn. And I'm keeping all of these strokes separate. I have a little bit of air in between each stroke. And I totally meant to do an underturn there, but I did an overturn instead, and that's okay. You don't get your um, proportions exactly perfect, that's okay. So I'm about at the end of my page. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to continue working on this side. Oval, underturn, overturn, compound curve. This is a really great way to get practice in. And if you if you feel like you made a mistake, just keep going. Don't try to scratch it out or cut it out. Just keep going. Creating meaningful practice that you can actually use instead of toss. And I think that's really what makes this so great. If you're feeling that purposefulness in your practice, you're going to slow down. You're not going to rush through it. Uh, because the trash can isn't the end all be all for this particular project. It's actually going to be a, a memory making piece. So that, that I think, finding ways to include your practice into something that you can use for calligraphy, or for memory make, making, for journaling, that's going to be um, your better practice. So if you create a purpose for your practice, that's going to be where you're going to find the most progress. So we have this cute sheet, and we've cut out a square, I've added photos, these cute details, and I'm going to add a little, little bit because my kids are, they're friends sometimes. We're going to pretend like they're friends all the time. We're going to write out friends here and put the date. And we've got a nice finished piece that we created from our practice.
I'm using a very light touch to write in the date, all in this nice little mono line. Go. This is how to use practice in a purposeful and meaningful way. If you like what you've seen in this video, we will be linking to all the products in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me and happy lettering.